Hi everyone, in this video we are going to start this new chapter of financial management that is financing decisions, right? Now this chapter of financing decision, it's a very simple chapter because here we have problems on EBIT analysis, right? EBIT, EPS, MPS analysis and we have got problems on leverages, okay? Financial leverage, operating leverage and combined leverage. It's very simple. We are going to see how to solve these problems in the coming videos. Fine, but in this video, what are we going to do is in this video, we are going to see the introduction of this chapter and we are going to see what is meant by financing decisions and what is meant by capital structure and all, right? So let's start. Now, first, let's understand what is the meaning of financing decisions, right? See, financing decision means it is a decision which is concerned with the amount of finance to be raised from various long term sources of funds. What I said. It is concerned with how the finance will be raised in the business, right? From where? From various long-term sources of funds. Now you will say, what are various long-term sources of funds? Yeah, we understood that it is concerned with raising of finance in business. But long-term sources of funds, what are those? What are long-term sources of funds? See, long-term sources of funds means debt, right? Equity and preference. That means debentures or bonds equity means equity shares preference means preference shares the company can raise the finance by issuing debentures by issuing bonds by what by issuing equity shares or by issuing preference shares yes and what the company pays in return in return on debentures the company pays interest on equity the company pays dividend and on preference the company pays fixed dividend isn't it it pays fixed amount of dividend in preference shares Fine. So these are the different sources of long term funds. And in this chapter in financing decisions, when we talk about funds, we mean long term funds. OK, we are not talking about short term funds like bank loan and all. We are talking about long term funds that are debt, equity and preference. Fine. So financing decision means it is a decision which is concerned with the amount of finance to be raised from various long term sources of funds. Fine. So. In financing decisions, these questions come into the mind of a finance manager that how much finance is needed for the business to achieve its goals, right? Let's say 10 lakh capital is needed, 10 lakh finance is needed for business, okay? So now, from where such finance can be procured, this question also comes into the mind of finance manager. From where does the business will get the finance, that 10 lakh finance? There are three different sources of funds, right? Debt, equity, and preference. Isn't it? The business can issue, the company can issue equity shares, preference shares, and debentures. Yes. And the third question is, and in what proportion? And in what proportion? In what proportion means that in what ratio? How much? Now, you need 10 lakh, right? In this example, which we took just now, that we need 10 lakh, and we have got three sources, debt, equity, and preference. Yeah. And in what proportion? In what ratio, in what percentage from debt you can raise the entire finance also 10 lakh entirely from debt or 10 lakh entirely from equity or 10 lakh entirely from preference. So that also you can do or what you can do is you can take mix of these sources. For example, you can take 20% from debt, 80% from equity or let's say 50% from equity, 20% from debt and then 30% from preference. The finance manager can do anything, right? But will that be fine? Just doing anything? No, of course not. Why? Because this is financial management. This is a finance manager we are talking about. We are not doing lottery over here. Okay, we'll take a chit. We will take 20% from debt and 30% from equity like that. We can't do that. We have to base our financing decisions on some analysis, right? We have to use some tools, financial tools, some financial, what do you say, financial tools to do analysis and find out the best option right the best proportion in which the business will benefit the most right the owners of the business the equity shareholders will benefit the most so that is what we have to see in this chapter okay we have to see the point of view of equity shareholders the real owners of the business the real owners of the company right so that is what so here financing decision means it is concerned with the raising of finance from long term sources of funds right and the most important thing is in what proportion how much will you raise from each of these sources that is the most important thing in this fine so we'll see all that with an example later right so 
there's one more thing that is capital structure that is very important capital structure now what is meant by capital structure see here we have definition of this author see capital structure of a company refers to the composition or makeup of its capitalization and it includes all long-term capital resources the simple meaning of capital structure is it's just a composition of capital it's just what composition i will show you here see this is the capital structure of certain business okay see here debentures 15 percent preference 25 percent equity 60 percent you see this composition this much is equity this much is debenture this much is preference this is the basically what is meant by this is basically what is meant by capital structure the composition of capital the composition or makeup how the makeup is of capitalization right this is the basic concept of capital structure right so capital structure is what see the simple meaning capital structure is the combination right the combination combination of capitals from different sources of finance right these are different source debentures from debt preference from preference and equity right these are different sources of funds right different sources of funds and these are the combination of capital that's all so it's very simple the capital structure concept you understood right it's just what it's just a composition it's just a mix of capitals or a blend of capitals right blender blend of capitals mix of capitals makeup of capitals composition of capital that's it it's very simple capital structure it's just the structure of capital okay but here what are we talking about is how to raise the finance and how to choose our capital structure the finance manager has to choose the best capital structure the best proportion in what proportion he has to make up the capitalization that is what we learn in this chapter financing decision okay so let's take an example in that example we will understand the whole concept of this chapter right let's do this okay let's understand the financing decision chapter in proper detail now let's take this example to understand more about the capital structure and the concept of this financing decision right so let's say this is you right and you are a finance manager of this company and this company wants to get a capital of 30 crores it is in need of 30 crores now tell me how are you going to raise the finance how are you going to raise the 30 crores see the first thing that you need to do is you need to identify the sources the long term sources of funds right there are equity shares debt or debentures preference shares right so now you have to create a capital structure you have to create a capital structure so let's say you came up with the four options the first option that came into your mind was equity shares only you will raise the entire 30 crores from equity shares by issuing equity shares and then the second option that came to your mind was equity and preference shares let's say you will use 70 percent equity and 30 percent preference shares okay and then the third option was equity and debenture okay equity 60 and debenture 40 percent okay just for an example and then the fourth option that came into your mind was equity shares preference shares and debentures the whole mix okay so you see this what is capital structure capital structure is nothing but mix mix of capitals composition of capitals blend of capital right right this is the capital structure how the capital is made up of right that is the capital structure these are the options you have or you can create more options also only debentures you can do that right but tell me how will you choose the best capital structure in these four how will you do that you will do that on the basis of some evidence on the basis of some tools on the basis of some analysis you will base your decision you will not take directly your decision you're a finance manager you can't do that you can't just take lottery you can't just take out chit and say okay i will choose option three you can't do that you have to base your decisions on some analysis so that is exactly what you are going to do to choose the best capital structure or i can say the optimum capital structure to choose the best capital structure the optimum capital structure among this four what you need to do is you need to analyze you need to calculate the cost of capital in each of these options and you have to choose the option which has the minimum cost of capital the minimum cost of capital and which has maximum earning per share maximum earning per share okay equity share i'm talking about earning per share or market price per share fine so you have to calculate eps 
earning per share and cost of capital to find out the best option now this we will see that in this another chapter that is cost of capital chapter okay here we just do a bit analysis to find out the eps okay we just do this eps ebit analysis ebit eps analysis and calculate the eps at the end or if possible we calculate the mps but mostly in the bcom bba and bbm exams they will give only till eps okay you don't have to calculate mps but still i have given you just for in case all right right so we'll see that now so we'll see this format now okay so what i said was to choose the optimum capital structure what you need to do you need to select the option which has the minimum cost of capital and which has the maximum value of the firm which means maximization of equity shareholders wealth that is the objective of financial management right the primary objective of financial management maximizing the wealth of equity shareholders that means maximizing the earning per share maximizing the earning per share i have directly taken over here see maximizing earning per share maximum earning per share the option which will give you the maximum earning per share the highest earning per share that option you have to go for that option you have to choose as your capital structure of your company fine you got the idea this is how you are going to choose your capital structure the option which has the maximum earning per share eps and the minimum cost of capital that option you are going to choose fine so this is how and this is the format here i have the format of eps okay ebit eps like this you will calculate the eps understood so now we'll discuss the format now so you understood that example right and you got the idea right about the capital structure it is just a mix and you have to choose one option among the option given to you in the question okay how will you do that you will do the ebit eps analysis of each options and you will calculate the eps of each options and select the highest eps option understood so that's all you have to do in this chapter and then you will see the leverages in the in the third video right in the second video we will solve the problem of ebit eps so first let's see the format of this right let's discuss the format now here is the format of ebit eps analysis see here see if you can see over here first we have got sales minus variable cost right which will give us contribution and then contribution minus fixed cost will give us earning before interest and tax yes but see this part right from sales to fixed cost this part is meant for leverage problems because in eps and this capital structure problems in this ebit analysis problems here here the ebit will be given to you and they will say choose the best capital structure right which option will you go for right they will ask that in the question so ebit will be given to you in the problem itself in the question itself in the leverage problems leverage the operating leverage combined leverage and financial leverage this will not be given to you you have to calculate you have to start from sales right but in this this will be given to you so you will directly start from ebit directly start from ebit okay this part is excluded from sales to fixed cost this part is excluded okay here you will directly start from ebit so earning before interest and tax so here you see here ebit e b i t right first what do you have i so first you will deduct the interest interest on debenture okay you will deduct the interest and then you will arrive at if you remove the i right what you will get ebt earning before tax right you will get earning before tax fine after deducting the interest on debenture what you will get earning before tax simple right and then you will remove the t you will remove the tax earning before tax minus tax then what you will get from before it will become after it earning after tax understood earning before tax minus tax you will get earning after tax simple first what you did subtract i interest then whatever you get from that subtract t right then it will be eat earning after tax and then if there are preference shares deduct the dividend preference dividend it will be fixed dividend the percentage will be given to you preference dividend subtract that then you will arrive at earning available to ea earning available to equity shareholders okay earning available to equity shareholders 
understood earning available to equity shareholders you will arrive at eish okay and then divide that eish earning available to equity shareholders by number of equity shares divide that by number of equity shares then you will get eps earning per share fine mostly the bcom in bcom exam bba exams mostly you just have to calculate the eps but if they have given pe ratio then you have to multiply eps with pe ratio and go to mps and then compare the mps with each of these mps okay mps of the first option mps of the second option mps of the third option and mps of the fourth option what i'm trying to say is you have to do this on the columnar basis if you have four options then one column two column three column four column so you have to use four column like that okay and you have to compare the mps the option which has the highest mps among these four option right or whatever option that are given to you in the exam you have to compare them and the highest option will be selected the option which has the highest mps or eps depending upon the question you have to select that option understood and now you will say why did we do this see we needed eps what is the formula of eps it's the simple thing eps formula is earning available to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares right so you need earning available to only equity shareholders so that is why you have to remove interest you have to remove the government tax you have to remove the preference dividend and then whatever money is left that is available for equity shareholders only then you will be able to calculate eps right so you have to go on deducting all that one by one first i then t then dividend right then you will get eish earning available to equity shareholders divide that by number of equity shares you will get earning per share fine and then you can also find easily mps how why did i multiply pe ratio with eps to find out mps see it's very simple first let's see the pe ratio formula price earning ratio right pe ratio means price earning ratio it is the ratio of price over earning right so price means what market price and then earning means earning per share so pe ratio is equal to mps by eps but if we have pe ratio and if we have eps yeah the pe ratio will be given to you in the question and we have calculated the eps then easily you can calculate mps how is that you can just cross multiply see right you have to calculate mps right just multiply eps with pe ratio just multiply right so mps will be equal to eps into pe ratio eps into pe ratio right so you directly you will get the mps understood so this is how if you have got eps and pe ratio then do calculate the mps and then compare the mps with all the options okay compare the mps of all the option and then choose the option which has the highest mps if you can calculate mps otherwise go for eps mostly in the bcom problem in the exams they will conclude the problems in eps the price earning ratio will not be given to you in the question if price earning ratio is not given then you cannot calculate mps till here only your problem will be finished understood so this is how you have to do the ebit analysis understood so this is how you will calculate the best option right the option which has the maximum eps or mps and minimum cost of capital we will see this in the cost of capital chapter okay how to calculate the cost of capital don't worry in the next video we are going to solve one problem on ebit eps analysis and then we'll go on we'll move on to the leverages problems fine we'll see combined leverage or financial leverage and operating leverage okay easy right all right